Hello friends, thought I would do a little walk around my yard tour. It is June 13th. We have been here 16 years and the middle of June is usually the prettiest our yard can be. Heat and humidity here in West Tennessee scorches everything by the time August gets here. We have a really hard time keeping things alive, especially if you are in the dead sun. And most of my flower beds and things are. Start here at my mailbox. The weirdest March and April weather this year. Uh, it would be 70 degrees one week and 40 the next, which stunted a lot of my bulbs and things that grow. This whole mailbox flower bed was full of tulips. All the leaves came up, but no tulips. So I kept waiting and holding off for the tulips to come. When in the meantime, I went ahead and planted my summer flowers. Tulips never bloom, so we finally just cut down all the tulips leaves. And so I'm kind of left with some big gaps in my planting. Moss rose in here is what I usually use. Those live the best here in the dead summer. And got a little petunia over here. And I always have a flag or something at my mailbox. This over here is something that needs a little bit of attention. You may remember this video I did about a year and a half ago. It seriously needs a little help. But this was a tree stump house that I made. Put it on YouTube, went viral, have uh, close to two million views on it. What's so embarrassing is that I have been able to make better videos and so I'm kind of embarrassed that that's not one of my better ones. It has traveled all over the world and it's just crazy the way it went viral. But that's what it looks like after a year and a half or so. Still standing and my little gnome guy is still there. This is the edge of a little what we call the guest parking. Just got some monkey grass and I can't remember what those uh, are planted there on the left but a little bird bath. When we bought this house, uh, we had so many flower beds that we've actually had to reduce some of them just because the maintenance was just unreal. We have this long walkway going to my front door and we've replaced all these bushes in the past 16 years with miniature nandinas and hostas. Those are, they come back every year and zero maintenance. This is my front porch. Got some rose moss rose planted. I always say rose moss or moss rose. Those are planted in little planters. These are my urns for the front. As you can see, I have one pretty lily blooming and the other one didn't bloom this year. So that's just another result of the crazy spring weather we had. And those are sweet potato vines that look like a bug or something's trying to get on them. And then there is my patriotic wreath I did a video on. This is my summer flag I have hanging on front of the house. I don't think you can see it, but it's a ladybug and something else. And here is a beautiful Japanese maple that we have at the guest parking. And then about 10 years ago, we planted a little three foot Japanese maple because we loved them so much. And this is about how big it's grown in 10 years. And it's just, they're so pretty in the fall when they turn bright red. And this is the flagpole that we have moved location since we bought the house. This was the previous owner's, I believe father or grandfather, but we're very patriotic people and it's just very important to have a flag in your yard. This is a little pergola my husband built me over my little swing. I sit out here a lot. This is kind of my quiet time. We have clematis that grow up on each side and the funny thing is my husband just dug a hole in the plain old dirt and they just grow like crazy it's time to kind of pull them down but it is so pretty in the early spring and the fall when these things bloom they are just gorgeous so they've just finished blooming here not too long ago now i'm going to show you our tomato plants these are planted in a hundred percent fireplace ash we look at other people's plants around here and they're maybe three foot tall ours are seven foot tall We've done this for the last, I'd say, 10 years. We take all of our fireplace ash every night in the winter and just put it in these two beds. And it's just incredible what it does to these tomatoes. They, our tomatoes are big as softballs. I've already harvested a handful of cherry tomatoes. My husband planted some sunflowers in the very back right here. I tell you, if you have a wood-burning fireplace, save that fireplace ash and plant your tomatoes in it even if it's a five gallon bucket pan over here this is just a little side flower bed 
going towards the backyard. Got a super cute little ladybug flag I picked up this past year. And this is a sign I made off of Pinterest a couple years ago, just out of some plywood going into our backyard. This is a one of our the biggest flower bed we have back here. I've weeded it a little bit. It needs a little bit more. So a few marigolds, petunias, and the and the uh, moss rose. That's the only thing I can get to live. Now up against the house is impatience because that is pretty much constant shade. This humongous hosta that we probably need to split next year. And this is a fountain I've had for a number of years. Got my Tennessee flag there showing my colors, but I've got a really cute flip-flop flag coming from my daughter. Just hadn't got it yet. Our patio back here. This is a, some potted plants that belong to my daughter. She just has yet to take them back to Kentucky with her. These are two big planters. I did have four planters. They were around the pool for several years, but now I'm down to two big concrete planters, and I just put these back by the sunroom. I just have petunias, the moss rose, and sweet potato vines, and that is some kind of grass that I buy at Lowe's that come back every year. That works out great. And look at this little concrete hot dog wiener dog my daughter got me for Mother's Day or birthday or something. Now this is a big flower bed that we put in a few years ago when we did the backyard. Now this is strange this year. I always plant the moss rose. This year, that stuff has exploded. It is to the point to where it's choking out everything. And I don't know what I should do. I love it. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's going to kill my other stuff. This year, we planted two big banana trees right in the center. And so they are about, you know, working on about three foot tall now. But you can see that I have never had it explode like this and just connect like ground cover. But it is beautiful, and this, you know, these little roses, they bloom out in the daylight, and at nighttime, they all close up. So it's kind of weird, but they are just gorgeous. Got kids' toys around, hadn't cleaned up yet from the kids. These are some Adirondack chairs that my husband built me. I brought home a, a old ragged chair I picked up on the side of the road in a dozen pieces, and my husband used it as a pattern, and he was able to make me two. I've had these at least... 12 years or so. Here is my little herb garden. Got strawberries right here. I've yet to harvest but one or two strawberries if I can beat the squirrels or raccoons to it. This is some basil. I have some chives and then these are some I believe onions or maybe garlic. I'm not sure what I believe that's just regular onions but that is some chives and basil. This this year our neighbor's pool messed up and they had to get rid of their pool and they asked if we wanted this concrete table set and I said of course we do so my husband went down and got it we cleaned it up and uh, sealed it and it's just a great addition to our backyard now last year this was my one of my newer additions to the backyard I bought the tops of some bird baths I love the look of those walk planters is what they're called like WOK but I'm not having real good luck with them I don't know if you know they just dry out too much or exactly what but i wanted a low-lying planter all around the pool i usually put them up a little closer to the pool now this one over here is seems to be doing a little better for some reason but last year they were gorgeous this year they're not doing so well i had this grass planted in the center of all of them and uh, there again the moss rose and none of them look as pretty as that one got a couple I used to have the little tag in this one. Oh, here it is. These are those plants I have in the front. They are dianthas. I think that's how you pronounce it, something like that. But those of you that have a green thumb know what I'm talking about. But those lasted all year long, even through the snow, and we don't get much snow here. And this is a little corner flower bed I have back here, just with some monkey grass. Got a clematis back there. And I, and I moved my little fa fairy garden under my fountain there. Now I'm gonna go outside of the gate. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen what's about past the gate, so I don't know what I'm gonna walk into. My husband is always up to something, but I'll show you our beehives. We live on all, almost four acres. This is our new raised bed that is not doing too well, catches way too much water because of the way the water drains. But we planted potatoes. I think we've lost most of those. We got some squash going. So not a real good success on our first time. We got some squash going. These were all the tom 
all the potatoes were and we lost those we've decided we're not going to go to the expense and by the time we repurchase everything we could buy a sack of potatoes is what i told my husband these are our beehives back here he's expanded to five four hives now but he has added honey supers on there we are in the honey flow at this point and we'll be harvesting some honey here in the next couple months and they're very non-aggressive bees i think they are russian bees they have italian bees or russian bees there is a difference in them i think that's what most people use but he's had a lot of fun this is his second year doing this little hobby it's a lot of fun it's kind of like our tomatoes we grow way more tomatoes than we need because we just give get such a joy giving the stuff away and people ask us all the time you know are you going to sell your honey well we just love to bottle it and give it away it's just fun and to you know give somebody something like that we are going to have lots of honey here soon it is starting to rain we are back we had about a 10 minute downpour and it did help cool things off just a little bit but just wanted to give you a little quick last shot of the pool this pool was built i think in 1981 by the original owners we're the second owners of this home and it was uh, the biggest in-ground pool you could buy at the time it's 49,000 gallons and it is about twice as big as what you normally see in a backyard so if you do the math or it doesn't take a brain uh, surgeon to to realize that bigger the pool more expense but and now that we are pretty much empty nesters or don't have any kids really on a full-time basis it's just uh, uh, an expense that you know it's just not hardly worth it anymore but it's fun when we do have it but you know in five years when we get ready to downsize we will definitely not have a pool next time and this is my fire pit walker <laughs> this is rainy I don't know, I've never seen her stand on that but this is a fire pit we put in when we redid the backyard three years ago we love these uh, benches we bought I believe I got those at or lowes.com they were unfinished and we stained them black and we have thoroughly enjoyed this fire pit it's a lot of fun when company comes over that is my backyard friends my whole yard thanks for watching bye bye